<laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to another round one for Street Fighter II, the 1994 movie. This is Jeff, and I'm joined, as always, with Kevin. Kevin, you ever seen this one before? Yes. like Really? This is probably my second time seeing it all the way through. Oh, okay. And I want to say sober, but sober for me. Now, the first time, was that because it was years ago and you were a drunk or drunk yes. at the time? Or what? Oh, no. Okay. It was... Um... No, I, it was on the PlayStation 2 anniversary collection for Street Fighter, which I think was oh. like, at the time was the 10-year anniversary. Okay. And I think you had to beat so many rounds, and it unlocked. And I was like, well, shit, let's watch this. And there was nothing to do. I just moved up here. Okay. And I had, had a few beers and fell asleep watching it. And I remember really liking it. Like, wow, this is so much better than the Van Damme movie. Well, and it came out before the Van Damme movie, technically. Oh, uh, in Japan. Because that was 95. And this right. came out in 94. In Japan. And at the end of the credits for this movie, it actually says, and coming soon is the live action Street Fighter movie. <laughs> so if you watch through the credits, Kevin, it told you there was a Street Fighter live action on the way starring. Jean-Claude Van Damme and Raul Julia. Raul Julia, God rest his soul, was the best part about that movie. It's the one reason to watch that movie. There's of course! He's wonderful. He's beautiful. Yeah. He, he like, chews all the scenery and between he and, and uh, Ming-Na Wen fucking amazing scene chewing oh yeah he's fantastic and you know if we have a good uh turnout on this video maybe we'll we'll end up slipping into a live action street fighter movie at some point this year when we do another round of video games but we got a couple more yet still to come and this was my first time watching this bad boy and i had a lot of fun I sat down and watched it with my wife for the first time last night. We watched the English language version, which was for free on Prime. So if you're wondering where you can possibly watch this, if you have Prime, it's on there. I believe it's on a few other streamers. It's on YouTube as well. But you can also find the Japanese versions on YouTube. I wanted to watch the Japanese language version. I just never got around to it today. So unfortunately, I, I can't give like the balance on which is probably the better version. I've heard the Japanese version is actually a little bit more serious in tone with a little bit of a different score and soundtrack to it as opposed to the English one, which is a bit more aloof. It's still a, a good English language, but the, the scripting kind of, it, it takes the tone down quite a bit and it's a little more free wheeling and fun. And I enjoyed it. I absolutely love the soundtrack. I actually need to look that up, but, after watching it with my wife last night, we went looking on e on uh, not eBay, Amazon, and we're going to be getting that 4K that Discotech put out. So maybe later this week, I'll do a quick little review of that. So that'd be fun to do. There's a 4K of this? Yes. Neat. <laughs> that would be cool. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty uh, excited. It, um, it has a different cover art. It doesn't look like... Uh, I don't, I don't think it's this background. I think it's a different cover art. Yeah. Is it uh, the red one? The red red background? That I deleted from our backgrounds? <laughs> no, I'll look it up quick if you... Uh, let's see here. Street 4K. Better two. But what I was saying before, while you're looking that up, is my my interpretation of this, what happened with the release was, is this got released not in 95, but in 97. Because the, oh, reviews, okay. the reviews for the live action flick were so bad, this got held off in the United States. I don't know that that's actually true. Especially with what you're saying, like, it's at the very end there. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Van Dam will return in Thunderball. Yeah. And uh, here we go with the 4K cover. Wow, that's pretty. I like it. Yeah, that's not as high res. That's just a quick little search. If I know what I was going to talk about <laughs> and want to show that off, I'd uh, brought that up and uploaded a better version of that earlier. But this is like the slip cover and the main cover art. So it's a little different than previous releases. A lot of people don't really like how this looks. I don't mind it, but I, I've never really been the biggest Street Fighter guy. I've been always a little bit more Mortal Kombat. That was going to be a question for later. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's beautiful. I I, I don't get the hate for that. Well, by comparison thing. to like the wallpaper in the background we got going on, the wallpaper, the background we have going on is looks way more interesting than that. But it's just it's just what discotech chose or what their license agreement told them they had to use like <laughs> from this column a or column b and column b sucked even worse well okay then we're going with that we'll see um well i mean they they picked the three main characters and yep. and that's going to go to my other question for you is is how do you think they handled an ensemble cast with this movie because street fighters got like a ginormous cast bigger than the yeah. first uh, uh mortal combat was i think um yeah well the first mortal combat only had oh no it was about the same size yeah it, well it because street fighter feels a lot more varied in their characters whereas in mortal combat it, especially in part two some of them feel like they're just mirror images of each other sub-zero scorpion and then you roll into like you know the rest of them they all feel like they're yeah. duplicating pairs like this is the yin and yang of each other so but with like street fighter you don't really have that except for ken and ryu yeah and even then they're not polar opposites like you say they right. are yin and yang they complete one another and Correct. and this movie does a really good job of illustrating that a yeah. lot better than they did is illustrating it in the uh, live action flick Oh, I would absolutely say so. Like whoever wrote this movie clearly had the knowledge and the care for Street Fighter 2. Um, whether they were fans of the original or it was just solely Street Street Fighter 2. This is a really good fun movie and it clocks in around an hour and 40-ish minutes and it felt very quick, well paced. But to your question about the characters they did a decent job doing an ensemble but at times a lot of the characters that you know other people might be more interested in like say zangief blanca they get literally one minute of time not, and they don't even speak one word and the fight's over and then that's it you never hear from them again and a lot of characters are left with dangling threads of What's going on with that person? What's going on with Cammy? We haven't seen her since she was in the hospital. And, you know, and Bison said they was, he was going to take care of her on the way to New York. And things just never happen or get resolved other than the main story. Yes, the the three main characters, because there's a lot that that. Well, golly, even from the very get go, the fight between Ryu and Sagat that you expect to get somewhere by the end yep. it does it's almost like watching mitchell on mst like john saxon just disappears <laughs> <laughs> never to be seen again <laughs> and you're like but but sagat what about his tiger uppercut and shit? you know like yeah yeah <laughs> That was a wasted opportunity, I think, that the live action picture got right that this one didn't. And I'm kind of like, eh. But to your point about Zangief and Blanca, you don't really know who actually won that fight. They kind of stop it at that point. Like, they, they each get the best of one another. But it gets really weird and creepy with Zangief pointing up at Balrog, who's the liaison for Shadow Law to, yeah. like, epstein like fight club <laughs> he starts like flexing his titas and making his shirt come undone so balrog could see his like open chest and you're just kind of like 
why like are the rest of these guys gonna be fucking impressed by that do you have another shirt to change into it oh was- god i can't take it <laughs> <laughs> there's somebody so, without a shirt on for the whole entire movie <laughs> yeah so the japanese fighters have to stay together because they're brothers but E Honda's only in it for like a more than Zangi from Blanca, but still a very yeah. brief moment. He's the only one of the like core cast members that does kind of make it seem like a ensemble film. Uh, yeah, he's in it for a few minutes here and there. He's kind of sprinkled in and out, but even his fight scene, he just tumbles off the edge of the cliff. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, kind of pulls a Moriarty like, I'm coming after you, bitches! <laughs> <laughs> and then they're both screaming, oh, shit, <laughs> as they're going to their plummeting to their deaths. Well, quote, yeah. unquote, deaths. I still like to think that maybe Honda landed on him and broke the fall. Like the opposite version of Tremors. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that one big dude. <laughs> they'll be landing on top. See, and and I I liked the way that they handled the characters in this. Like the the characters and their character types with the exception of say guile all felt oh. really close to the character yeah like ryu being much more peaceful and having that friendly uh, rivalry with ken felt natural to the game again the game has no plot it just fight each other until you get to m bison so a lot of it they get your ass kicked and start all over again yes yes Yep. And then bitch because you want to play as Vega, but you don't have the turbo edition. Right. Or the super edition. <laughs> but he's so pretty. Oh, that was a lot of fun. And I wish there could have been more of that. Like Chun Li fighting was really cool, except for they didn't have her in her outfit fighting. We'll get to all that later. But and why is that, Kevin? Was because she after a very nice shower scene there was a booty there was a booty in this movie like cartoon booties yeah (laughs) (laughs) so vega like jumps her as she gets out of the fucking shower and she, she holds her own for the most part and she busts up what what the miz likes to call the money maker and that sends Vega into like this horrid frenzy and, and cuts her up and knocks yeah. her on her ass and nearly lops off one of her boobies. Which brings us back to our new segment of the show called Look at That Camel Toe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did not sign off on this. <laughs> at least we right. didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Evil is a good career choice. <laughs> I, took... <laughs> I took out the language, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you did. Takashi's great. Like I've been wanting to throw him in a meme for a while. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, Vega beats the shit out of her, but then she finally does her, her what is it, thousand foot kick or whatever, and it looks really cool. Yeah. She doesn't need rescuing. Like, no. she holds her own. She gets to the end of her, like, like, life points, for lack of a better term, as she kicks Vega out the window, which was really cool, but then she gets fridged. Like, she's not dead, but they just write her off into the hospital. So Guile can suddenly be nice to her and flex to show how, how like, serious he is. He oh, should have yeah. done the, the Lex Luger with the pecs dance in it. Make the boot, man boobs jiggle up and down. Be like, yeah. yeah. The peck pop of love. And it was so awkward because he never goes back for her at all. You well, until the very end when he goes back to the hospital and she pretends to be dead and then jumps him. Oh, that's right. Never mind. No. That was the necrophilia joke I had. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I knew it would come back to me. Meow. 
<laughs> but you know to to circle back that that's actually a really good fight in here there's two like really awesome fights and that is absolutely one of them uh the the next the second fight is basically the final battle with bison and ken and ryu going on and like there's no story beat to it but the fact that they don't take place in a traditional hey i'm gonna fight you hey i'm gonna fight you no it's you got vega totally trying to assassinate her and take her out and catch her while she's in uh, a distressed state uh, where she can't like totally protect herself she's vulnerable and totally trying to cut down doesn't happen i mean he tries to take her out but i it didn't really feel like he did that much damage to her so seeing her like carted away on a stretcher and knocked out was like how many concussions did she suffer on that flight or why is she all bandaged up at the hospital typical anime bandages fix everything yo <laughs> <laughs> the animators had just seen dark man they're like dude i got an idea <laughs> or hey you know dragon ball z they wrap everybody up in a million miles of like gauze hey let's do that too i see come in hubby ha i like chun li and they Chun-Li's did Chun-Li very good really right in the movie of course they got ming na win to play her and that's just the best uh and again the scene between her and raw julia where he was saying you know the day that i came in and eradicated your town and killed your family is the day that changed your life yeah to me it was only tuesday Fucking amazing ruby <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> Ruby Tuesday. <laughs> Not just any um, Tuesday. And, and and it was very simple on this. About as simple as it was, if not simpler than the movie. Yeah. Where Bison wants to get the world's best street fighters to be the generals of his terrorist army. You don't know why it's got to be street fighters why they can't actually get actual soldiers but it's still cool it's still cool you have to be like i don't need to know the answer to this question <laughs> you'd be okay with the cheese is really what i'm saying what he should have done is talk to dana white and said when you finally buy the ufc i want to work with you and take all of your top fighters and do my real evil organization here because as well as you know kevin is a good career choice it sure is <laughs> that's, saying. that's our psa i liked bison in this uh, bison like, was dope as hell in here even when he did the levitation with his feet i'm like okay i may not be the most hardcore street fighter fan i mean i like it enough but like to get beats like that for a casual street fighter guy that that you're doing something right if you're making me smile at shit like that yeah yeah and uh another example of that is like they cock tease you throughout the entire movie that you know the hadoukens coming because they have these cyborgs that analyze all the fight data that they don't actually do anything with but they're analyzing all the fight data (laughs) <laughs> they're trying to get ryu specifically and i have written down for ken you'll do <laughs> that sucks because like he was just the second player in street fighter one and they were the two best fighters in street fighter two so they became right. friends this just gave them a better story um but golly yeah he captures ken with almost like no problem whatsoever turns him evil with a machine that um i was thought it was going to be like a clockwork orange where they make alex like watch all the horrible oh, things with that yeah yeah but instead it just reads his mind and then he uses what he calls psycho power to mind control him and then he just like emasculates him really bad making him do shit that he wouldn't ordinarily do of course 
<laughs> this is gonna have to be the, the header for my Facebook page. <laughs> That's <was> pretty good. <laughs> my wife's like, "Why bunny ears?" I'm like, "Because it makes me laugh." <laughs> well, it makes sense. What's he gonna do? Like two horns on the side of each head? He he'd have to move his body. <laughs> But that was the teleporting and the shadow fighting like you were talking about. That yeah. was really cool because, again, much like the Hadouken powers and the uh, the Shoryuken, the uh, up, up, uppercut. Thank you. Can't even talk tonight. That you only see once, I think. No, you, you see, see a couple what? of uppercuts. Yeah, like he does it zinfully up on the mountain. You see the very beginning opening scene is where he's fighting Sagat, and that's where Sagat gets the scar across his chest. Oh, my God, yeah. And that was the part from the game that actually or was from the game. So it was really cool to see. That's why I was so disappointed by the end where it's like he didn't get to fight Sagat again and actually get to take him out with that final tiger up, not tiger uppercut, the Shoryuken. Missed opportunity. Yeah, like like we talked about, there's some loose ends. I kind of feel like they were hoping to get another movie to tie in, you know, like another sequel to go along. Didn't really work out. I'm not really sure why this wasn't a, as big a success. I, I didn't even look at box good. office. I thought it did pretty good in Japan, considering the time, but it's got a very interesting design aesthetic to it. And it reminds me a lot of like Fist of the North Star quite a bit as far as like animation style, but like more like top notch because watching this, the, the scenery is beautiful. The animation's excellent. Yeah. Like they did a really good job making you feel like you're going to different parts of the world, not just a static location where everybody comes to fight on an island. It wasn't like that at all. It's just everybody kept trying to find everybody else. So it felt like there was constant movement. And that really accentuated all the animation going on. So you had the story, you had the music, you know, the great animation style and the background anima animated. It was some really good detail work. Imagine how this would have looked today with like some CGI. Not that I've been screaming that this should have had any CGI in it, but like, if you could refine some of those details in the background, you could make them look a little bit, you could make them pop just a little bit more and give it a little more depth. Sure. Um, as it is, this this looked great. I love the final scene when they were blowing up the temple in Malaysia. That was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that was. Um, because you don't, that you don't actually see in the movie. They just like talk about the troops coming and then they do their whole, yay, jump up in the air and breeze. Um, but going back to what you were saying with the backgrounds, they yeah. threw in some Easter eggs in this, which I thought was really fun. Uh, there's one scene where Ken and his, his girlfriend are like passing oh, this the... semi truck, yeah, and it's got Capcom written across the side, and it's like, no, oh, we caught it, we caught it. Um, yeah, and then this scene here, also going back to what you're saying with the backgrounds, this was a cool Easter egg, should have gone somewhere. Akuma, just hanging out there, eating fruit. You're like, just oh. chilling, bro. Yeah. Nothing wrong. And, and this is happening while Blanca and, and uh, Dalsum are fighting. And Dalsum stops the fight. Or wait, it wasn't Blanca. It was uh, E-Honda. And he stops the yeah. fight. And he's like, oh, there's somebody here that's like really powerful. It, like, we got to go. Probably would have already felt that from Akuma. But it was still yeah. cool. Well, yeah, they were talking about like Ken being in the audience and oh, you could beat me. I give up. I give up. And Ihan is just like, what the fuck wrong with you, dude? Yeah, like, like but I'll take the money. <laughs> no shit. Like they made him really jolly. It was it was a little stereotypical, but he was a cool character. Yeah. A character cool enough that it would have been fun to see him more throughout. And before people go, well, God, there's like 30 characters. Okay, you talked about the, the soundtrack. The soundtrack's fucking awesome. Oh, Part yeah. of the soundtrack is fucking uh, Alice in Chains. They played them bones. Yep. The I was whole like, what song is that? I'm like, oh, that's Alice in Chains Bay. Yeah, I was like, that's, that's awesome as fuck. I love that song. 
They yeah. play the whole thing though, the whole song. And yeah. It's not the only song that they play. So there's a lot of padding in this 100 minute movie or 90 minute movie. Um they they could have taken some of that out like the driving and walking scenes and given some of those other characters a little bit more story or had a story to bring them along to fight towards the end. True. Kind of like the shitty live action movie did. That was a yeah. little bit better doing that as far as bringing the ensemble together. This wasn't worried about bringing them together at all. It was right. just a matter of putting so many people in the flick. Yeah, I think they did pretty good considering. I just kind of wonder, like, how how many characters are you trying to shoehorn in there just for the sake of <laughs> having them in there versus actually utilizing them properly? But, you know, if you're trying to set up for potential sequels, and I don't know if they did or, or if they were, it almost felt like it by watching the movie. Like, hey, you got all these people in the background. You're setting them up to introduce them for the next one? Or are you just setting it up for people to get interested in the live action movie coming out internationally the next year? I don't know. It's it's a very interesting choice with who they chose to highlight. Not not so much who they chose, just who they didn't choose, I should I should say. Fair enough. And like the this movie these two movies the live action and the anime are very interesting because the one excels greatly where the other one suffers greatly yeah and and vice versa like some of the acting in the movie is far better than this i can't say that raul julia is better than this guy or this guy is better than raul julia they're two very different types of m bison Raul Julia was perfect for what he was doing. This gentleman is perfect for, for what they were doing. That was about it for the movie. Like most of the other voiceover characters were a little uh, out of place. And I think it suffered because there was only individual reads. Like nobody was like together reading. So it was just oh, people yeah. like responding to the page or responding to the director on the other side of the glass. Yeah. And that shows a lot in this. But again, that's better than Van Damme's acting. I mean, like, you can't judge it too terribly. Ah, oh, Van Damme it, Kevin. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is probably really shitty, but I dislike the other movie so much that it's like, for a fighting game, there's not so much story that, like, it should be 100 minutes long. But it is, and it's not boring, and it's still oh. fun. It's better than what we had. And that's why I think I liked it. It's like it's a lot closer than what we got. Yeah, this is the movie a lot of people would have probably preferred to see if they had only seen the live action one. Yeah. This is the this is everything that that one was missing, and then some. Like, even the one with Jean-Claude Van Damme. The soundtrack in that's not great. The acting is not great. The story is horrible. Some of the casting's fun. Some of it's not great. Just saying. No, no one's really terrible, I don't think. No, but, like, but it's not great. No, they screwed up on Blanca. Like, they make you wait to see him at the very end, and then he looks like shit. Yeah. You're like, all right. Uh, the gentleman that played E. Honda was pretty cool. Yeah. That's about it. But I, the rest of them, not so much. The, the movie had no balls. It was very PG, PG-13. Had no balls whatsoever. Whereas Mortal Kombat was even shittier, but had a little bit more blood. This, I think, within the first five minutes, Ryu kills somebody for mocking him. And it was beats, dope. Beats the shit out of him, breaks his nose. Yeah, like, he was out fast. And then... Where, you, where we were talking about pigeonholing or pigeon towing uh, uh, characters in, this is where Fei Long comes in. And I'm sorry for, <laughs> for everyone that listened to the podcast. Brian Cranston is playing Fei Long in this movie. He's, he's not in Miracles, the TV series. Uh, you'll find that out if you uh, tune into our uh, podcast dropping on Wednesday. 
look, I what can't that's always, all about. I can't always be right. Is really it, it's once a month. Is I and it doesn't even sound like Cranston. That's the funny thing. <laughs> like I expected to hear Hal somewhere, but not at all. Yeah, not at all. But anyway, uh, and then with the characters, even the ones that didn't get a whole lot of dialogue time, there was a lot of detail given. And some of those details were really good. Some of them were really bad. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> we talked a little bit about Balrog. Um, and how very tastelessly he was he was drawn. Um but one thing that they did, I can't say that they got right, because I don't remember it being this way in the video game, but it looks so fucking cool here, is when he's fighting E. Honda at the end, one of his eyes is facing the other direction. And it's not like, you know, that's they drew it that way. <laughs> it was an accident or it was a birth defect no he got fucking rocked in the head so hard it hit the other eye in the other direction i'm like oh, that's so fucking cool <laughs> that's funny like that was such a neat little detail it fucking hit him in the head so hard that his eye went the other way <laughs> hit you so hard i'll make you lazy i get back to work get back to work <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, but it was fun. And the fights were fun in this. Like, like you said, there's not a whole lot of like individual fighting for people throughout the whole thing. Although oh, yeah. there, is, there is the padding. There are a lot of fights, but they're small and quick. Like they don't really last. They clearly spent their time to do three really awesome fights and several other kind of mid to unnecessary fights yeah yeah there's really nothing to dislike about this i mean you can't go into this movie looking for sunny chiba street fighter it's just it's it's not that it's right. it's the first attempt at bringing video games to life after super mario brothers tanked so fucking hard at, at the box office <sighs> and this tanked hard at the box office as well, the live action version. And I, I wish anime was more broadly uh, embraced in the 90s. It, it was embraced in the 90s, but still not remotely like it is now. Yeah, this it was a very niche, niche crowd back at that time. Because I even remember junior high and high school, nobody was talking about this. They were talking about like older stuff like Gundam. Pokemon, you know, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, which I know is an anime, but that was something that, that was being talked about at the time. You know, there was multiple other things. Street Fighter animation was not one of them. One thing I, I remember the hearing about the cartoon, same thing about the Mortal Kombat cartoon, which came, you know, but not much <laughs> as far as like anime, anime, you know, things... Things just weren't coming over all that quick and fast and hitting off with everybody. It was very hitter. It was very, very niche. It wasn't until early 2000s that things started to pick up. And from that point forward, it's nuts. Now manga is overtaking comic books in America and anime is climbing up the charts fast. They've had some excellent movies in the last year in the theaters that have done very good box office. And we just had Godzilla Minus One come out. That I know that's not anime, but like the Japanese have a have a great eye for some entertainment. They're not a hundred percent on, but most of their stuff is pretty good. Their eye for art is so much better than ours. Like it, it, you read the books to Vampire Hunter D, which was my favorite anime growing up. Probably the only anime I really liked growing up. It, like it was so beautiful such beauty and color in it i just zero pointed myself because i got to thinking about the stupid hydra things that the hydras the um the snake ladies the medusa uh, no 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 sirens the sirens sorry ah. that's our zero point for the evening i hope the only one anyway Very but, well could be 
But I'm you know, to, to, to your uh, point, you know, Vampire Hunter D is what got me into anime, and that wasn't until about college time for me. Mm -hmm. So before that, I saw like a little bit of like, oh god, Akira, and I like thought that's pretty nasty i happen to be watching like one of the grossest scenes in that movie <laughs> and that's towards the end and so i had no concept of what the hell was going on so my idea of anime at that time was like akira and that's it so i had d if i had seen this instead i think i might have gotten more into it but like fist of the north star was kind of hip at the time even though it was more from like the 80s yeah but i did like that one too that was yeah. probably the only other one I did like. And I, I would have liked back there. Yeah. This Street Fighter 2, when the when the arcade game came out, it was fucking hot. Street yes. Fighter 1, nobody had ever heard of before. And Street Fighter 2 was so hot that they had to keep coming out with different versions of the arcade game to keep yes. getting people to pump quarters into that shit. Yep. And they start getting more and more characters, but it kept having to be called Street Fighter 2. Yeah. It was like, what, Turbo, Alpha, and like Super. three other ones? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like, I've got two versions of it on the PlayStation. There's another version of it on the Switch for the Genesis. Yeah. Um, there was just a bunch of different versions of it. And they did throw different characters from turbo and super and alpha and whatever the fucks like fey long uh dj i think shows up at some point in this uh, yeah my uh, wife is like a big i did not know she was a huge street fighter fan and she was rattling off names and backstories as we're watching it was pretty, <laughs> i'm like when the hell did this happen <laughs> it's like we never really talked about street fighter because you know, I, I've said it before, like I was way more of a Mortal Kombat guy. My knowledge of Street Fighter 2 was basically the very first version of the arcade game. And then the movie, that's it. Like, I've not played any of the other games. I've played a little bit of like Street Fighter 4. But like, my wife watched the cartoon. She said she had seen this movie before and she played the hell out of Street Fighter 2 in the arcades and at home on a console. And she's rattling off, oh, that's DJ, and this is his story, and this is this, is this person. And Fei Long, who's modeled after Chinese Kung Fu artist Bruce Lee and other martial artists of the time. And I'm just like, where the fuck did this come from? I'm like, Damn, I didn't know that about my wife, and I've been married to her for a while. That's very impressive. So there is definitely a clear audience out there and a big fan following and from what i know like this movie is the movie to watch like not much yeah. else is worth watching but this is the business to me this is the adaptation well up until super mario brothers no this has no. been the adaptation of a video game right uh, like Yes, it was animation, but I think that was the only way this could be properly done without being completely campy and cheese. Right. Um, I No, I do agree with that. I still have yet to see a decent live action Street Fighter, and I have the more modern one on my shelf over there. That is not the yeah. Raul Julia one. There is another one. and uh... Oh, the one with uh, uh, Lana, uh, Kristen Kirk. Yep. Yeah. I did not see that one. At least they had her playing Chun Li, and I think that's cool. She was a decent person for that. Yeah, I think so too. Um, even though I can't stand Lana, she fucking tossed it out to every swinging dick in Smallville except for Clark. Anyway, um, zero point number two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> this this was so popular, like, and they like I said, they tried getting that cash cow as much as they could before, like Mortal Kombat took all the older kids. This this was really well embraced by Nintendo because Nintendo didn't want the blood, they didn't want all the horrible violence that Mortal Kombat got to be, right? Which was pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> um, 
this was <laughs> this was huge. This was so huge because it could be embraced by kids. They even had yes. GI Joes of these fucking things. I and they, kind of remember that actually. With the exception of like Ryu, they looked stupid. Yeah. Like Bubba Perry or Sergeant Slaughter made a lot more sense than this. Oh, of um, but I mean, it, it was still cool. But it was this was a phenomenon, and it's still kind of the echelon of that franchise. Now they just came out with Part Six, but these characters, most of these characters, are all still there, albeit a bit updated. But this They're was way more roided. Yes, way more roided, uh, much more HD, <laughs> a lot sweatier. Oh God, I can't take it. Uh, like when he's sitting there flexing and it shows his bicep gets sweatier, you're like, ah, oh, it's it, it expresses Quick, get that man a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> cheeseburger get a fucking chamois get that cocoa butter out of his skin yuck <laughs> <laughs> uh. now did you when you played this did you have a fighter i usually played ken yeah i it's just who i would always play ken ryu one of those two i always gravitated towards that i i ended up liking vega i actually had a buddy of mine in uh junior high who really was a hardcore sagat fan and he he was top notch and oh, although he would come over to the world combat cabinet and get his ass kicked but he'd stick to street fighter and beat everybody's ass even though the controls are relatively the same the timing's a little bit different in street fighter and you know figuring out the movements and i never put the time and effort into street fighters but he was so hardcore oh my god i think his name was steve none of the steves we know but you know <laughs> i did run with a crowd that was into the arcades and you know street fighter was pretty good but i always played like ken ryu i would try to play blanca i i could never quite i would always spam the special and just get my ass kicked anyway <laughs> yeah yeah that's i'm not good at fighting games i used to be i think oh i used to be really good in the arcade and yes. once i got to college that kind of ended so when we would get out of school my best friend and i would walk to his house and we'd stop at the pizza parlor that was in between and of course they yeah. like every other pizza parlor had an arcade cabinet to street fighter too and I would kick ass, like just be like railing people's quarters and shit like that. And this 12 year old kid, 10, 12 year old kid comes up. Oh no. And just starts slapping the buttons. Yeah. Fucking kills me. Three times. Three times. I quit. I quit playing Street Fighter 2. Pretty much quit playing oh. Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I didn't come back to fighting games until Mortal Kombat uh, Deception, I think it was. Oh, yeah. And those two later. games, yeah, those two games were a lot of fun. I like Deception, yeah. Yeah, but I was so ashamed of myself and so hateful that all you really had to do to be good at this game was just slap the buttons and and I want I, I wanted to go home instead of my buddy's house and cry. <laughs> <laughs> like I got beat so bad, spanked. Spanked is the word I'm looking for. I had my fair share of uh, getting my butt kicked in the fighter games until you learn to get good. It's just how it was. But you had to wait your turn. That was what was horrible. Is you lose, and then you got to wait back in line with the other four people that want to play the game. It's like shit. And then Oscar, you don't wanna... get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> I don't want to play him. <laughs> yeah, there was a there was an arcade on the way home, and um, one was closer to the junior high that I was going at, and then there was one about halfway that was I don't remember if it was a deli or a bakery, but they or a lot it was one of those two, but they had a Street Fighter in there, and so that. If you wanted to play Street Fighter, you had to walk halfway to where I lived, 
but if you wanted Mortal Kombat, it was closer to school. And uh, not yeah. many people played the Mortal Kombat one because it was kind of a seedy area, so to speak. And uh, a few of us just, we, we knew the, the dad of one of the kids who owned the place. And uh -huh. he basically just let us roll in there. And he said, if you do, if you do at least $5 worth of quarters in there every day, you can continue playing and he'd open up and just give you a uh, one quarter. He'd pull the, pull it out, pull out the tray, take out all the money. He could drop a quarter in, it would click and then you could take it back out. Cool. But you had to drop at least five or give him $5 and he just let you play until you had your fill. That's cool. That's really cool. That was dope. I would have loved that. That's how I got good at Mortal Kombat. And that's what gave me loyalty to Mortal Kombat, too. That and I love fatalities and stuff like that. Mortal Kombat is what gave me loyalty to Sega. That's where yep. I kind of went to that Nintendo. Too. And Sega is, does when Nintendo don't. That's true. That's true. And I never got into the Dreamcast, but the Genesis was my jam. Uh, the the blood uh, game gear for me. I never had a Genesis until recently. I the Genesis I wanted because of this uh, this in Mortal Kombat. I yep. wanted the blood, not the gray sweat. Right. It just seemed so much cooler. And uh, this is what you did at the time. Like this was the popular game. This was on the fucking cover of Nintendo Power and Game Pro. Yeah, we had Game Pro back then. <laughs> 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 I had to think about that. There were several. Um, I'd have to try and remember them all. I think Game Insider was another one, too. I don't remember. I, I just remember Do Game Pro and then Game Informer, which was like 10, 15 years later. Mm. Or I might be getting it confused and backwards, but you know, I, I enjoyed reading those magazines. I never bought them. In hindsight, I kind of wish I had because they're kind of collectible these days. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, my gosh. The Nintendo Power for Super Mario Brothers 2. Ooh, that's expensive. Ooh, I believe that. It's like a claymation picture of Mario holding a turnip jumping over a mountain, and it's really pretty. Yeah, I want to try and get a Nintendo Power of a certain Zelda game for my wife. Hopefully she doesn't watch this one and know what's coming this year for her birthday or Christmas. <laughs> I don't think she watches though. <laughs> See, I can say whatever I want about my family because they don't watch this shit. Yeah. Like I have to like point out to the kids, hey, there's daddy and uncle Jet. All right. Yeah, my family don't even want to give me a subscribe, so screw them. <laughs> <laughs> Which means they're never going to watch this anyway. True, like they're always happy to see, hey, my dad's on television. Like, that's only YouTube kids, but I like what you're saying. Yeah. yeah keep telling your teachers that. Uh, <laughs> 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 Don't tell them I suck at fighting games. But I really did give up on fighting games for pretty much ever. Like, I, I'm not very good at fighting games at all. I still can barely do the uppercut. Barely. Yeah, barely. I can... I'm okay on a console. I do have a, a pro fight stick here. It's a Hori stick. And I got that when it was on PS3. It, it's oh. like PS4. And mm -hmm. it's fun. I enjoy it, but it doesn't feel right to me. Like, I feel like I need to be standing at an actual cabinet to really feel like I could kind of, you know, uh, muscle memory and be able to do what I used to do. But, you know, because the... The joystick's just too small. I don't have like a full size Hori, which is you could get a full size stick and a full size layout. I'd love one of those. Hey, that's too expensive. But you know, I got a fight stick, and every once in a while I fire up a Mortal Kombat. And there was a time like I think Street Fighter 4 was like on the PlayStation Network, and I'd play that just to see how well I do. I never went like online and did online matches. I just did Easy mode, and uh, let's see if I can figure out how not to get my ass kicked. Too bad. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. With Mortal Kombat, it's like, nah, give me normal mode, and I'll I'll play it until I get sick of it. But I'm I I'm, could play. I'm not great these days. <laughs> I'm just not. I, 
I'm not good at all. And I just started trying playing this on the Switch tonight. Oh. And it's very difficult. And I'm trying yeah. to like go through and like reprogram the buttons. And it's like, fuck you. <laughs> I'm like, Argh. uh, but this is great. I, I've never not enjoyed playing this by myself with other people. Right. Never again. Um <laughs> I hope my god brother's not watching this because he's going to write in at some point going, you suck at Mortal Kombat 2, bitch. Hey, I want to hear that comment below. <laughs> or see it. Uh, my god brother's like super duper good at fighting games. Like he can, He's like a savant at this shit. Yeah, I could probably... I wouldn't stand a chance. Uh, me and I'm like, eh. I like the art. I like the story. I like the ass whooping. I like the violence. Oh hell yeah! But now it's a, it, now it's a lot. Like by the time that they've gotten to the Street Fighter Six, VI, the Five, like there's so much intensity to it, and Mortal Kombat has so much intensity to it. Mortal Kombat's really grainy with their new graphics. Like it's awesome, but it feels nothing like these old fighting games. These are very nostalgic, right? I want to say they're fun for us to go back and play. Oh, my yeah. kids would probably be like, eh. My kids would probably get really pissed off and frustrated that they can't get their ass, that they can't win. Right. So. Ah, uh, kids these days. You gotta yeah. lose a lot before you win. It's just how it goes. And we know this has turned into kind of like a broad Street Fighter conversation. The The movie is excellent it just kind of is going to depend on how serious you want to take it as far as like if you watch it in the english version it's not so serious but if you watch it in the japanese it's a lot more serious still want to check it out like that though bison is very imposing to your point like his dialogue yeah. they they show him up close and when he talks, it's his voice is deep. I think they got his voice correct. One of the very few that did. But it, like watching him talk was distracting because I started getting a little aroused and I wasn't sure why. The butt and, chin. And then it occurred to me, oh, yeah, that's a booty, too. Look at he twerking. He twerking when he talk. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I can't take it. You're fired. And no, then it I'm got fired. to a point where it's like, dude, make him stop talking. Stop. It's gross. And it was yeah. big old butt chin. And they always zoomed up on it. Now, there's no hair on it, fortunately, but still. It's gross. Give that man a beard. <laughs> Give him a beard. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they did a great job with the um, imposing. And they did get their... Uh, some very good voice actors to do some of the roles now the, most of them were were fine for like english dubs but some of them were outstanding and i think they chose very very well yeah yeah i can't say that anybody's bad it's no. just the de the delivery is bad i don't think anyone was miscast no they might have just been a little misdirected when it came to the booth and hey please have this sort of inflection in your voice instead of read the script let's try a couple of different ways on how to do different lines let's not try and americanize it too bad but what we got is what we got it's it's still a lot of fun and nothing's yeah. so bad that you're like oh what the fuck am i watching here no it's good enough to make you just you got a couple drinks going you could sit back with pizza and a beer or just soda you don't have to be drinking or inebriated or anything like that but if you're into that, you know, this is one of those movies you just kick back. You don't have to think too much about a plot. And that's probably where this succeeds ultimately is in how simple it is while being without being too simple. It's simple enough. You can follow this along. You'll see some familiar faces if you're a fan of this franchise in any regard if you're not you're gonna just gonna wonder who the hell some of these people are and why they're only on screen for a few minutes and just move on yeah but ultimately i enjoy the hell out of this we're adding it to the collection per my wife's command so she's like you better be getting this for the collection i'm like oh i am honey 
I am. <laughs> it's fun. Like I, yeah. I think I own the live action version. Oh, I got the live action version in a steel book back here. But. I wasn't that committed to Sparkle Motion. Uh, I think well, I it have comes it with bison bucks, bro. Does it really? Yeah. <laughs> bison bucks. <laughs> Stupid ass movie. Stupid. But this was this was so much better and i don't want people to go out and expect that you're going to watch like a vampire hunter d type movie it's no it's this that. is not that but this it's is not fun. high art <laughs> yeah this would have blown your socks off as a kid is really what it would do this oh, is yeah. nostalgic if nothing else this is the badass street fighter 2 you wanted to see out of the live action one that you just you never got and it, it has a lot going for it it's just so nice to look at i i don't care if it's old style animation with hardly any cgi if there even was any i couldn't it didn't look like it to me looked like all hand drawn outstanding and beautiful i could not wait for that 4k to see how crisp it looks yeah there it was uh, i hope it's not as dark as what i saw um where i was watching on youtube was really or not youtube it was yeah, it was it was uh, prime. So dark in certain spots. Like we, we, I don't know if I already showed it or not, but the, we were talking about the bosses in the scene here. I wanted to make this like a album cover, turn it black and white, make a joke about it, but it's so dark you could barely see anything. Right. So that's that's where I hope the 4K is better because a lot of animes have that problem when it went from VHS to DVD right just, it mean, didn't get any brighter yeah i mean it got a new scan so hopefully we'll see how how well that turned out and if it's worth it or not i i have a feeling it is most of the stuff that comes from discotech is is pretty good in my opinion i have galaxy express over on my other shelf over here that looks beautiful it's more standard def converted to hd but anything that would have a source that's way more hd off of an actual film print which is likely for Street Fighter 2, this movie, I would feel like it should be pretty good. I dig it. I dig it. it, it in that case, I mean, I, I do want to get this at some point, just for me, not so much my kids. They're not into this sort of thing. All right. But I did like this as a kid, uh, or the franchise. I would have loved this. And I'm oh, yeah. sad I didn't get to see it until I was in my 20s. Like, 10 years after the fact is a long time and there was none of the magic taken away when i was mm -hmm. saw it when i was in my 20s there was none of it taken away when i saw it in my 30s and there's none of it taken away now like none of it's so cheesy where i'm like eh. there was no padding so thick that i wanted to fast forward through it and again this oh, is yeah. a 100 minute film uh, surprised at the time surprised at the enjoyment for that amount of time in spite right. of the padding yeah they could have uh definitely tightened it up a little bit they could have probably cut about 10 minutes out i think kept it at about 90 and it might have tightened up the the pacing just a tick and gotten rid of some things you just didn't need like we've talked about all the walking scenes and like the unnecessary cameos that didn't really or fights that literally came out of nowhere weren't really needed at all could have just shelved them and just focused on the story just a little bit more i think overall it could have used a little more polish but what we got was still very enjoyable a lot of fun and for me i never saw this i i've heard about it for years i i always thought like most of the street fighter animated stuff was just utter crap to be honest and when you were like hey let's do this movie i'm like okay i'm game <laughs> and, my wife was like, and my wife asked me the other day so what movie are you watching for your next show and i'm like oh street fighter 2 the animated movie she's like can i watch it with you i'm like yeah if you want to uh, because saturday nights we usually do some movie night and she's like well i've seen it before i'm like and then as we're watching i get the <laughs> the 411 on basically every character <laughs> and what's going on and and she and as somebody who is a fan of the franchise she really enjoyed it she said there was a few times it's like why do they do this it goes nowhere there's a lot left open at the end and that's where i think like 
they were probably hoping to set up a sequel, which is unfortunate. But for a kickback, relax, turn your brain off movie, gets no better than this. For my first time watching it, absolutely enjoyed the hell out of it. Actually makes me want to get back into watching some of the anime that's kind of sitting on the shelf waiting to get watched for the first time. So I'm trying to figure out what I want to watch now. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I could yeah. not tell you. Could not tell you. I like this. I I I might go play a little bit more Street Fighter later on. Just there you go. It's, it's nostalgic and fun. This was a big part of our childhood. Uh, yeah, in one way, shape, or form. Yeah, like it, the part two is still the echelon in a lot of ways of, yes. of, its, of its mythos. No one could tell you the names of the new characters as opposed to like these originals. Originals. Thunderhawk. I um, <laughs> thought you were going to say Thunderbucket. <laughs> I have no idea. I honestly, oh God, what was the guy in Street Fighter 4 or 5, the new white guy that's big and fat? I don't remember. Butterbean? No. Oh. I, I, I don't know. Rufus. Oh. Yes. I tried to play that character, and I'm like, what the hell is this shit? <laughs> I Imagine tried doing an animated movie now with some of these newer characters. Half the people would be like, who? Yeah, well, you know what? Mortal Kombat, we'll talk about it next week, they excel at that. And yeah. it's and it's too bad Capcom doesn't kind of jump on the that bandwagon a little bit more, too. Because right. Warner Brothers is making some nice scratch from that. Oh, yeah, the, especially the newer versions. Now, the big problem a lot of people have with the newer versions is they basically created a brand new hero to center the movie around instead of using an existing one. And I really like the newer Mortal Kombat movie, which is getting a sequel. And yeah. I get one of my favorite actors in it playing Johnny Cage, even though I think he'd be better as Kano. But <laughs> uh, Carl Urban is going to be Johnny Cage. In the newer Mortal Kombat movie. I hope he punches somebody in the balls. I, just... I think he's going to be absolutely killer. I think it's going to be excellent. I just hope he doesn't shave. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's rocking a great mustache and beard right now. <laughs> I hope he's a prick like Johnny is. I really do. There's still a market to make these movies. Mortal Kombat still making movies about Liu Kang, Sub-Zero, and Scorpion. There's still room for the original cast for this. Oh, I agree. And I think, you know, there's no better time. If Street Fighter is just kind of in a kind of a holding pattern right now as far as games and any sort of property, this would be a really good time to come back around and do an animated film like this today. I, I just would hope that they don't go too crazy on the CGI. That'd be what I'd be. That's what ultimately I would be afraid of. Just please stick to look at this as the template. You can improve upon it with modern technology and the tools you have at your disposal. You can make something like this even better. And I would argue there is a spot for that. That's a you want to keep the franchise going somehow. We don't need a live action one. Get the fan base back. You know, you got the gamers out there who are playing Street Fighter 6. Hey, fantastic. But if you want to keep like the animated features going, there's a market and there's room for it. And yeah. based on this movie, this worked. So more of this, please. Yeah, because none of the characters, none of the original eight, or six, whatever it was, were boring. Like, everyone had a fun backstory. Everyone had a fun ending when you beat Bison with a different character. Right. So, I mean, there there are movies and stories for each each one of those things. Like, six at least. Eight at yes. least for each, each game. So, yeah. I would watch that. I would watch that. Oh, yeah. Got any other final slides you want to show us, Kevin? Or are you all wrapped up? Uh, because we were talking about Street Fighter 2, mm -hmm. I thought it would be fun if we did look at that camel toe 2. 
(laughs) (laughs) At the very beginning of the movie, speaking of characters that get written off that goes nowhere, Cammy from Street Fighter 2 Turbo, I think it is, does this amazing execution of a politician. I don't remember if he was American or British, but she like jumps on top of him and snaps his neck doing a three or 180. And you're just kind of like, oh, what that is that a baby? <laughs> is that a huh? Wow. <laughs> you're like, okay. Very, very interesting. Yeah, there's there's a lot of adult detail to this, and I appreciate oh, that. yeah. A lot Definitely more for mature expect. audiences, yeah, or immature teenagers. <laughs> That's a booty too. <laughs> but no, other than that, I got nothing. All right. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in for zero point reviews with Kevin and Jeff. Hopefully, you like this video. If you do, please hit that like button down below. Comment, share this video out there. We'd love to hear your thoughts, and please hit that subscribe button. We've got some great videos on the way, and next week, we're coming with the live-action first Mortal Kombat movie. So stay tuned for that one. That's going to be round two. Get over here and subscribe now. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you all next time. Make sure you check us out on all of our social media platforms. We got Facebook, Twitter. We are at Suns and Shadows. We're also on Instagram at Suns and Shadows Cast. We are at SunsandShadows.com. Thank you again, everybody, and we'll see you down the road.